A lot of people probably wouldn't trust someone so young to make a hit video game, but for the past 20 years, Trivia served as an icon for Nintendo and HAL Laboratories, and his then 19-year-old creator has gone on to become a legend in the gaming community. His name is Masahiro Sakurai. Hey guys, I'm BLTX, and welcome to a new Nintendo video. Usually described by me as a little pink puffball, Kirby is perhaps the most adorable character ever to hit the 90s world of video games. We cuddle him, we hug him, we pair him with Pikachu for some reason. Anyway, in the early 90s, a young ambitious 19 year old by the name of Masahiro Sakurai began work at HAL Laboratories. One day, he was approached by a man called Satoru Iwata. Iwata had been looking for a game that anyone could pick up and play, and allowed anyone to pitch him ideas. Sakurai pitched an idea for a game called Twinkle Popo, and Iwata approved. Kirby at the time was also known as Popopo, and this name was later referenced in Kirby Mass Attack, where the game is set in the Popopo Islands. Kirby's basic design was originally used to test the game. However, Sakurai and his team became fond of the design, and decided to stick with it. Shigeru Miyamoto, the creator of Super Mario, later stated that the name Kirby partially came from John Kirby, a lawyer who defended Nintendo in a lawsuit against Universal over similarities of the original Donkey Kong game and the movie King Kong. Though there is some confusion as to how much John Kirby's name really impacted Kirby, is... The color of Kirby had some trouble being decided. Sakurai wanted Kirby to be pink, while Miyamoto wanted him to be yellow. Deciding a color became so confusing that Nintendo made him white on the box out of Kirby's Dream Land to match his look in the game, just to play it safe. Sakurai served as lead planner, designer, and artist. As per Iwata's request, the game was designed to make sure anyone could beat it regardless of the skill. This eventually led to Kirby's flight ability. According to Sakurai, being able to take multiple hits from enemies yet dying immediately upon a hold didn't mix well in my mind, so I blew up Kirby like a balloon so he could fly at any time. Interestingly, using the enemies to attack was an idea from the start of development. An early idea was Kirby headbutting and kicking enemies into each other, much like soccer. Oh god, soccer, I hate soccer. The game was developed using a twin Famicom with a trackball input and on screen keyboard. If you don't know what this is, a twin Famicom was a system made through combining a Famicom and a Famicom disc system. Along with the trackball and gamepad, this was also used to help with development as a visual tool, which was created by HAL while developing a game called Metal Slater Glory. Projects on the Twin Famicom were saved to floppy disks, and being a Game Boy title, it had to fit roughly 512 kilobytes of space. On August 2nd, 1992, Kirby's Dream Land was released in Japan to surprising success. The game sold a total of 1 million copies in Japan, and during its life sold over 5 million copies worldwide. This was only the start of Kirby's adventures, through games like Kirby 64 and appearing in every Smash Bros. game as a playable fighter. That's all for Kirby's first game, but before we go, I'd like to talk about two slightly obscure things from the Kirby universe. If you ever want to see this guy animated, look no further than the Kirby anime. Right back at ya! Yeah! Known in the US as Kirby Right Back At Ya, the anime is somewhat of a little known relic from Kirby's past. Not too little well known, but I still think it deserves a bit more attention. The anime features a lot of characters from the games, like Kirby for example, but also a lot of characters that were made especially for the show. To list them quickly, we have Tiff, Tuff, Escargoon, Sir Ibram, Ladylike, Decori, and many more. The show follows Kirby after crash landing into Dreamland when his ship detects the presence of a monster there. King DDD and his assistant Escargoon turn out to be the ones responsible for bringing the monster there intentionally, and it soon becomes the main focus of the show. Kirby, Tiff, and Tuff find out from Man Knight that Kirby is actually a Star Warrior destined to defeat enemy, or Nightmare and Nightmare Enterprises. It is true. Oh yeah, and there's this guy. The Nightmare Enterprises Salesman. Referred to simply as the Nightmare Enterprises Salesman, this guy is somewhat of a carn artist, frequently scamming DD for literally trillions of dollars or D bills. That's an outrage. How much does His Majesty owe? This becomes one of perhaps the show's best running gags. DDD is always caught in a massive amount of debt, and occasionally he gets scammed into paying it off. I remember a few years ago, I decided to watch some of the episodes as research for an older idea of a video, only to find myself binge-watching every single episode, and the movie. Before ending off today's video, I want to talk about a very interesting character from the Kirby universe, Meta Knight. 
Meta Knight's first appearance was in Kirby's Adventure, which is the second Kirby game, but the first had his copy ability. Meta Knight is actually pretty mysterious in this one, as he'll occasionally throw you invincible lollipops throughout the game. He also has henchmen, simply known as the Meta Knights. They're actually pretty tough, but I did manage to come up with some kind of strategy. Here's my tip. Take out the top guy first to avoid fighting two of them and use sucking as a self-defense against the chain ball throwers. It's actually worked out pretty well for me. That's about it for our little pink puffball, but there's a lot more Nintendo trivia. Be sure to tune in at 2.30 every day to look for a new video, or subscribe to get notified. Tone to Gasa.